Minutes will be published early next year. Question number seven, the Honourable Marion Street. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Health and asks, is he satisfied with the state of children's health in New Zealand? If not, why not? The Honourable Tony Ryle. Mr Speaker, for the great majority of New Zealand children, yes, but for some children, the state of their health in New Zealand does need to improve. And that is why the government, despite tight times, has spent billions extra to support these children and their families. 28,000 kids at 148 schools are part of the Rheumatic Fever Program. 93% of children aged two are now fully immunised. Over 90% of children under six are now getting free doctor's visits, including after hours. And the government has funded targeted additional well-child visits. We have also received a number of new reports, and we agree with some recommendations, but not others, and we will be considering these over time. The Honourable Marion Street. To the Minister, taking those uh, statistics and figures that he likes to trot out into account, why have hospital admission rates for children for acute upper respiratory tract infections, viral infections, skin infections, dermatitis and eczema, and some vaccine pre preventable diseases increased over the last three years, and what does he intend to do about it? The Honourable Tony Ryan. Mr Speaker, yes, uh, some uh, causes of hospitalisation have increased, whereas others have decreased. Uh, but overall, the latest uh, report, I think the Child Health Monitor, shows that we are having a reduction in those number of hospital presentations. The causes of those, of course, are quite multifactoral. The Honourable Entry. Marion Street. Why do admission rates for socioeconomically sensitive medical conditions remain much higher for Pacific children and then Māori children than for European and other children? And what does he intend to do about that? The Honourable Tony Ryle. Uh, Mr Speaker, as I said, there are indications that those uh, hospitalisations are now becoming are now beginning to reduce. What is the government doing? We are doing a number of things. Uh, we've grown the number of uh, doctors and practices that provide free visits to children uh, by 25 per cent, where we now have 93 per cent of New Zealand children able to go to primary care for free if they're under the age of five. We've extended that to after hours. We're also investing $24 million in a rheumatic fever programme, and very importantly, a number of government departments have contributed to the tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of homes that have benefited from the government's home insulation programme. Or something the else. Honourable Marion Street. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Why are rates of sudden unexpected death in infancy very unequally distributed, with rates for babies from the most deprived 20% being over six times higher than for babies from the least deprived 20% of areas and over four times higher for Māori babies. And what does he intend to do about that? The Honourable Tony uh, Ryan. Yes, Mr Speaker, the Government is quite concerned about the rates of sudden unexpected death in infancy. The advice we've received, there are two major interventions that could assist in reducing these numbers. One is reducing the prevalence of smoking of which the government has an unparalleled record of achievement. And secondly, in the area of providing safer sleeping spaces. Quite a lot of activity happening around the country in that area, including uh, 4,000 hippie pods, which have been made available to new mothers around the country. The Honourable Marion Street. Does the minister have any specific plans to address unequal health outcomes arising from poverty in the next budget, and if not, why not? The Honourable Tony uh, Ryan. Mr Speaker, the member will have to wait until the next budget to see those, but what I can tell the member is in a series of budgets this government has invested uh, in order to improve the health status of all New Zealand children. If I was to take, for example, immunisation, where it was only four years ago, 67% of New Zealand's two-year-olds were fully immunised, with marked contrast between Māori, Pacific and European. Through the funding and effort of this government, we have now closed that gap to where 93% of New Zealand children are fully immunised, and Pacific children, I think, are now at 96% fully immunised. So we've closed the gap through focus and effort, and that is certainly the government's record. Question number eight, Colin King. Thank, thank you, Mr. Speaker. My